Matt Van Brink. It is a pleasure to welcome you to Cutting Edge Concerts, and uh, you have chosen a very unusual poem, and it's it's about the piano, and you mentioned that the uh, the poet is also a composer. Right. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about only the piano can give us our piece, correct? Yeah, the derivation of the title and the poem, uh, which is in turn the program note, it's all very circular. Um, when I first wrote the piece, uh, it was called Sextet. And it was back in, the, in its original six-person format. Uh, and then finally, uh, a friend of mine offered to write some program notes. Martin Kennedy offered to write some program notes. Mm -hmm. and I said, great, that's a great idea. And when, he, uh, when I got them, when the program notes finally came back to me, they were in the form of a sestina, a poem. And a sestina is? A sestina is a specific um, form. It's six stanzas long plus a short seventh uh, stanza envoy at the end. Mm. Um, it's, uh, it, it focuses on wordplay and encourages wordplay. Um, the last word in each line uh, is a repeated word. That is to say, um, the last words in each line keep showing up in the successive stanzas, mm. and then uh, double, they, they show up twice in each line in the envoy at the end. The title for the piece ends up coming from the last line of the, uh, right. the poem, only the piano will give us our piece. Mm -hmm. And those six words that are ending each line are piano, piece, develops, wind, crescendo, and one more that I'm forgetting. And that, of course, influenced you, I assume, in, in writing the piece. I wish I could say it was true, but the piece was done before the program note came. <laughs> oh, how interesting. So that's how it's sort of looping back on itself. Well, tell us about the piece, because that's, after all, what we're going to be hearing. Right. Yeah. This piece is one of those true colors pieces. Well, I call it one of my true colors pieces, mm. because I wrote it so quickly. Mm -hmm. It was written for Collage New Music in Boston back in 2004, and I had all the time in the world to write it, and it was going very badly, so I scrapped what I had and mm -hmm. quickly wrote something else. Hmm. And I always feel like your true colors always come through whenever you've got a limited amount a of time. A deadline, yes, indeed. Nothing more inspiring than that. Yeah. Um, uh, so the piece itself ends up being something in sonata form, complete hmm. with the first theme, second themes, and key structures. Oh, how interesting. Is it a tonal piece? I would, by definition of tonal, yeah, it's a tonal mm -hmm. piece. It starts and ends in C major. Mm -hmm. The first theme is in C major. The second theme goes into something else. Mm -hmm. I forget. Uh, but then comes back more in C major-ish at the end, just the way a real sonata allegro movement would mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel as far as tradition and uh, breaking tradition and, and learning from the past uh, as opposed to throwing the past out the window? Obvious, obviously, the past means a great deal. I'm interested. To you. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. these. Um, I like the opportunity to try to do something new in an existing form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my uh, professors at Indiana University loved to for my geometry professor Douglas Hofstadter, who's a cognitive scientist teaching a geometry class, mm -hmm. loved to present uh, proofs of geometric theorems in mm -hmm. the forms of sonnets oh. and other poetic forms. How so lovely. I'm really interested in combining mm -hmm. combining things like that, like a and, puzzle. And it, 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 apropos the puzzle and the program notes, uh, is there no relationship then between that? Because it seems like the poem itself is in a very musical form. Right. right. But uh, the piece was already written when you yeah, wrote... Yeah. It just fits. It's almost like an extra sheen of... Um, mm structure and elegance that you can put into this product that the piece is. Well, would you want to read the program notes uh, then before the, the piece? Does it have any bearing on the piece itself? Does it help the listener understand the piece? No, I don't think it helps the experience of sitting and listening to the piece. Mm. I think it's a separate thing that is um, informing. It, it informs it however you like, but I wouldn't read it beforehand. Okay. And as far as things to listen for in the piece beside the C major and the Sonata Allegro, what other aspects of your true colors are there? The piece is, um, it's consonant. Mm -hmm. I know we're talking about key areas yes. and major chords, um, but the, uh, every vertical moment is pretty consonant. Usually there's just seven notes at a time. The chords change kind of quickly mm -hmm. in this larger structure, but... Um, I think my music is optimistic and fun and consonant all at the same time. Mm. In terms of, uh, of composers uh, in the past who you most admire, um, it sounds like Haydn, Mozart, um, you know, in terms of the far distant past, yeah. not the recent past. I, 
I, I feel like this is a traditional answer, but mm -hmm. I love the music of Ravel and Bartok. First mm -hmm. of all, because of the um, how much I viscerally react and, and just love it. Mm -hmm. But then when I look a little more intellectually at it, I love how they have combined things. Yes. Ravel has combined um, sonata mm -hmm. uh, yes, traditional indeed. forms um, with his own personal language. And Bartok has taken the, the language folk of music. folk music and right. put it into his own mishmash that he mm -hmm. calls his own. So mm -hmm. I'm very inspired by those composers and those ideas. Great. Well, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing your piece. I'm looking forward to it too. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks.